के शुचिपुत्र thousands and thousands of times at the lotus feet of my holy master my supremely worshipable spiritual guru dev asmadiya parmaraj tum guru pad padma nitilila pravishta om vishnu pad stotra satasisma rupa anuga acharya sila bhakti vedanta narayan goswami secondly i offer my pranams to the thousands of times at the lotus feet of my param guru dev to param puja pad sila bhakti vai bhav puri go swami maharaj param puja pad sila bhakti pramod puri go swami maharaj param puja pad sila bhakti rakshak shida dev go swami maharaj param puja pad sila bhakti vala tirtha go swami maharaj param puja pad sila bhakti dayat mara go swami maharaj to sila bhakti vidant swami Prabhupada, Prabhupada Srila Bhakti Shnanswar Thakur and all of his Tadiya Nitya Parshat Brinda 
his eternal associates. And then offer my pranam to her entire Sri okay. Rupa Nuga, Gaudiya Guru Parampara. And finally, I offer my pranam to Parampujapad Sri Bhakti Vichar Vishnu Maharaj. Parampujapad Sri Kanta Das Paramachari Prabhu. And all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis, Vancha So today, we have been very fortunate to hear such nectar from the lotus lips of Maharaj <coughs> glorifying our Guru Varga, how our Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur is the embodiment of a Gauravani. What did Sri Chaitanya Mahapu say? Jai Jai Magai Tara Deya Apandhan Garma Vrishti Sahi Ani Kare Rakshan If someone goes to a tree and asks, oh, give me fruit, jackfruit, <laughs> give me leaves, give me flowers, give me your branches, give me whole trunk, then tree will give. What? Hmm? Mahaprabhu is saying, that person who is more tolerant than a tree, anyone will ask something from them and they will give everything without reservation. So Maharaj told this story exactly how Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur is the Gauravani Swarup, the embodiment of the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Very beautiful. So taking he has explained so many beautiful things, but on his plate he left a little remnant for me to also take. <laughs> the humility is one aspect of Sharanagati. Sharanagati means surrender. Surrender. But what does surrender mean? In our language, surrender means if you are in a battle, and you run out of bullets, <laughs> and you cannot fight anymore, then you make the white flag on the stick and I surrender. <laughs> so this is not surrender. <laughs> surrender has been described in the Sri Hari Bhakti Sudha Day. Anakul Yasya Sankalpa Pratikul Yasha Varjanam Rakshisiti Ti Vishwaso Gauti Tvei Varnam Tata Atmanik Shepana Karpanye Nsadvida Shanagati Surrender has six angas, six limbs. How can we understand if we are surrendering or not? So the first one, Anukul Yasha Sankalpa Sankalpa, I make a Sankalpa, a vow that all the things which are favorable for devotional service, I will follow that in my life. And practical yasha varjanam, all the things which are unfavorable, like nama parad, dama parad, vaishnava parad, atyahara priyasas cha prajapunya magraha, janasanga stroyam cha sadbi bhakti binashati, overeating, overcollecting, Mm? Over endeavoring, speaking mundane to persons, oh. with three sangi, those who associate illicitly with women, with mayavadis, impersonalists, mm? all these, th all, all negative things, they ruin bhakti. Completely. So I make a strong promise before Sri Krishna and Sri Gurudev. Oh, I try my best to leave all the things which are negative, uh, which are detrimental to progress in my spiritual life. Hmm. Then, hmm. go to the hmm, Rakshishati Ti Vishwaso means to have a very strong Vishwas, a confidence that Krishna will protect me. Hmm. Only Krishna can protect me. Hmm. A gun will not protect me. Hmm. Kung Fu will not protect me. Hmm. 
Yeah. Insurance policy will not protect me. Yeah? Who, who is my protector? When danger comes, hey, go in. Krishna will protect me. Yeah? And especially this means he will protect my bhakti. This is the main thing. Yeah? Because if some accident will come and you will die, it just means that Krishna wants to relocate you to do seva in another place. Hmm? So death is not a big thing, eh? because whatever progress we make, we take that with us. But especially, we have faith, oh Krishna, please, protect my bhakti. And how can bhakti be protected? Hmm? I see in my life, in my own life, how my bhakti is protected. Hmm? Sadhu Sangha. <laughs> I am sitting here, my mercy of Krishna, I am sitting here between two great sadhus. So I am safe. Yeah? Because they are with, by my side and they love me. Hmm? And I am bowing down to them and they bless me, then my bhakti will be safe. Otherwise, everything finished. Without Vaishnavas mercy, everything finished. Yeah? So, Rakshishatiti Vishwaso Gopti Tvei Barana Mutara. Now, this is very important. Gopti Tvei Barana means to Barana select your uh, guardian. Who is your guardian? Krishna is your guardian. The reason is this that if you are worried about your maintenance, how you will live? When I am old, who will take care of me? Where will I get money from? Where will I. If the mind is preoccupied with the existential issues, then you cannot do bhajan. Because instead of chanting Harinam and thinking Krishna, then you're only pulling the rope with one hand and thinking money, money, money. <laughs> money, money. <laughs> Brighter than sunshine, sweeter than honey. <laughs> How to protect yourself? No, Krishna is my protector. Hmm? So go to Tvei Barnam Tata. Hmm? Atmanik Shepana Karpanya. Karpanya means humility. Karpanya. Maharaj was explaining about that. Uh, humility. Huh? If you see a good quality in another person, then take your magnifying glass and make it very big. Hmm? This is the sign that the heart is being purified. You see, even a small quality in someone, you think it's something very big. If they do a little service, you think this is a great service. And on the other hand, if you see a bad quality in a person, even if that bad quality is very big, then you make minimize it, make it very small. You can take your cloth and cover it, that others will not see. But it have to soon it will go away, then you can move your cloth like this. This is Vaishnavata. Huh? Vaishnavata like this. <laughs> so, and Atmanikshepana. Atmanikshep, Nikshep means to throw. You throw yourself at the mercy of Krishna. Fully depend on him, just like hmm, Prahlad Maharaj. <laughs> you know, Hiranyakashipu told the demon soldiers, kill this boy. So they took him to the top of a big cliff and they threw Prahlad Maharaj off the cliff. But Prahlad Maharaj was, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. <laughs> he was not afraid. And Krishna caught him and put him on the ground. Hmm? So throw your life in the hands of Krishna. Don't worry about anything at all. Hmm? This is surrender. Sharanagati. So, Srila Prahlad Maharaj himself has explained that without Sharanagati, all of our bhakti, all of our practice is only a drama. It's not actually bhakti. Hmm? Everyone knows Prahlad Maharaj has said. Hmm? Sravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Pada, Sevanam, Achnam, Bandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmani, Vedanam. Nine practices of bhakti, hearing, chanting, remembering, serving the deity, offering prayers, etc. Everyone knows this verse. Huh? But it's important to know the next verse. Iti pomsa pita Vishnu, bhaktis chenna valakshinam, kreti bhagavat anda tanmanye ditam utamam. See, Prahlad Maharaj said, when his father asked him, what is the best thing that you have learned? He said, the best thing I have learned is that that person who offers himself completely, surrenders completely to Vishnu. Now you may say that, well, I cannot see Vishnu, how can I surrender to him? But Vishnu has two aspects, Vishay Vigra and Ashray Vigra. So the Ashray Vigra of Supreme Lord is Gurudev. 
साक्षात हरित्वे न समस्त शास्त्रे उक्त तथा भाव्यात एव सन्ति किन्तु प्रभु या प्रिय एव तस्य वन्दे गुरु श्री चरणार विन्दम गुरु कृष्ण रूप होय शास्त्र प्रमाणि गुरु रूप कृष्ण कृपा करण भक्त गानी गुरु इज वन फॉर्म ऑफ कृष्ण हु हैज अपीयर्ड टू गिव मर्सी टू हुम वी टेक शेल्टर सो इथी फॉर्म सा पिता विष्णु भक्ति चरण अवलक्षण that person who first surrenders to his guru dev and then he engages in hearing chanting and remembering that is called bhakti and if a person is not surrendered to their spiritual master but they hearing chanting and remembering this is only a drama pretending to be a devotee you know sometimes there is in a film they have some devotees in a film but these are only actors they dress up they put on tilak kanti mala plus that is what But they are not devotees. So we don't want to be like that. Devotee means first sarva dharman prityajya mame kam shanam. Surrender to Sri Krishna through his representative Guru Dev, and then under the shelter of Guru Dev, then we engage in <coughs> hearing, chanting, and remembering. Mahat kripa bina kaun karma bhakti nae Krishna bhakti duro ilaho sanchana ikshay. See the Krishna's garage was Swami Pari said without the mercy the blessings of Mahat without being in their anugatya under their guidance then anything that you do is not bhakti what to speak of being bhakti even the bondage of material existence will not become loose you will still be completely stuck here so shanagati is very important you can put your finger on your pulse take your own pulse and see Am I surrendered or not? Am I following in my life all the things which are favorable for bhakti? Utsaha nistya dharya tatat kama pravatana. Sangha chagat sato brite sadhvi bhakti. Prasiddhi. Being enthusiastic. Being very patient. Having strong faith in guru, sadhu and shastra. Hmm? following all the rules and regulations the vidhi hmm? the vidhi of vaidhi bhakti hmm? don't think i am in raganuga bhakti i don't follow vidhi no those who are in raganuga bhakti also follow vidhi hmm? only difference is in the internal mood hmm? so no excuse one should follow all rules and regulations very carefully that we have learned from our guru hmm? and leave the association of materialistic persons <coughs> and maintain one's life following the example of satobrite means follow the example of the previous acharyas if you are in grihastha ashram follow sri vastakur follow sri labakti notaku if you are in brahmacharya ashram then you follow prajumna brahmacharya if you are in sanyas ashram then you follow madhavendra puri ishvara puri our proper bhakti stands with our guru our guru dev Mm-hmm. Like this. So live one's life, maintaining the life, following the example of the great uh, sadhus in the ashram that they are in. If you are in the same ashram, you follow their example. Like this. So all of these things make bhakti become a success. So are we really following this? Mm-hmm. Are we depending on Krishna for our maintenance? Mm-hmm. How does our sharanagati, our surrender, become compromised? It becomes compromised by anya shray. Anya ashray. That means other shelters. Mm-hmm. Instead of being under the shelter of Krishna, we take shelter of other things. But if we do this, there is a sign. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The sign is you will not be happy. You will always be nervous. Mm-hmm. Any Vaishnava can look in your face and read like a book. Mm-hmm. If you are happy or not, if you are nervous. Sila Bhakti no Takura said, Atmani Vedana Tuga Pade Kori Oinu Parama Sukhi Dukha Dure Gelo Chintana Roi Lo Chauri Ke Ananda Deke Oh my Lord, Atmani Vedana Since I surrendered my heart to you, hmm? I became completely happy. 
All the sufferings have gone far away. I have not one worry on my mind. Not one. And whichever direction I look, in four directions, I say Ananda. <laughs> huh? Do you feel like this? You can take your pulse and see. Huh? <laughs> so if you're not happy, if you're full of anxiety, it means that the Sharanagati, the surrender, is lacking. Something is lacking in the surrender. Mm -hmm. Ashoka Abhaya Amrita Adhara Tomar Charana Dwar Tohati Ekon Vishrama Labhya Chadinupa Virabhoi Srila Bhakti Nautako said, O oh Krishna, your lotus feet are a reservoir of nectar wherein there is no lamentation and no fear. Hmm? Are you lamenting sometimes? Oh, alas, alas. Why did this happen in my life? Huh? Complaining. Huh? Be careful. This lamentation and complaining, this is all tamagur. You know? In Varnasham Dharma, there are four Varnas. Hmm? Brahman, Katya, Vaisha, Sudra. Sudra means one who does a shoka, lamenting unnecessarily. Hmm? So one who is lamenting is Sudra. Hmm? Krishna said that Chaturvanam Maya Sistam Gunakama Vibhagasha. What ashram, what Varna you are in, depends on your guna and karma, how you behave, what your qualities are. So if you lament, certified, you have certification sudra. <laughs> Lois passed. Huh? Lois, don't lament. Huh? You have to know this fact. That nothing bad ever happened in the past, nothing bad is happening in the present, and nothing bad will ever happen in the future. Hmm? And if you disagree with what I'm telling, you are in my <laughs> Because those who are saying the Chaudiki are on the day, they see joy everywhere. No, no problem, no anxiety. Tohati Ekon Vishram Labia. And that person, he said, Srila Bhakti Nautakur said, Now I have attained the restful state. I am completely relaxing. Vishram. Vishram. That doesn't mean he is lying on the bed doing nothing. <laughs> then in his heart, he is the very peaceful, but outwardly always doing seva. Seva to seva to seva with no gap in between. Nirantarya Mai. Anukulyena Krishna Anushilanam. Anushilanam means that bhakti is nirantarya mahi, completely flowing, like honey from a jar. Hmm? You know, if you have water in a cup and you pour, it splashes, the drops go here and there. But when you pour honey, it comes out in one thick stream with no break. So when all the activities of our body, all the words and all the activities, the thoughts in our mind are going without any break whatsoever. Hmm? Like an unbroken flow of honey. Hmm? Then this is called Anukulyena Krishna Anushilam Bhakti Uttama. Actual transcendental bhakti. Hmm? So Sila Bhakti no Thakur, he's, now he's going very high. He says, Purva itihasa bulinu sakala Seva Sukha Pae Mane Amito Tomar Tumito Amar Ki Kaja Panadani O Krishna In the happiness of service to you Purva Itiyas Bulinu Sakala I have completely forgotten my own previous life history If someone say Prabhu, can you write your biography? Say, no, I cannot remember anything. I don't know. I cannot remember my name even. What I was before. <laughs> this is Sila Bhakti Namtako is saying. That means the, the ahankar, ego, is become digested by bhakti. Yesterday we touched on this topic. Jareyati Ashu Yakosham 
Nigrinam Analoyata, third canto, Srimad Bhagavatam. Kapil Dev is describing the glories of devotional service. He said it's exactly like digesting food. Yeah? When you eat food, then without thinking your food is digested by the stomach. So in the same way, when we engage in bhakti, hmm? even without thinking about it, what happens? Jari ati asu ya kosham. Kosh, that is the uh, shukshma sharia, subtle body. Uh, manas, buddhi, ahankar, all digested and gone. <laughs> Finished. Srila Bhakti Nantakura said, Linga Banga Hoye Anayase. The holy name will linger on, destroy Shukmashari. And then when the subtle body is uh, digested, uh, manas, buddhi, ahankar melted away, then Purva Iti Hasa, Pulinu Sokala, Seva Sukha Payamani. And Atma soul is very happy and has forgot all this uh, bad dream of the material existence. Hmm? Just like one great Vaishnava, he says, Na pitam mamritam maya dina nishakri tor antare vanagama viroditha batakrita na sitapate. He said, Alas, 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 I did not drink nectar between the sun and the moon. Yeah, this is just what I'm saying, this time. it doesn't make sense at first, <laughs> just, <laughs> because this is Kavya. <laughs> Kavya, the meaning is not in the words, it's in the Dwan. Yeah? So he said, alas, I did not drink nectar between the sun and the moon. Alas, alas, I did not, but the Kritas see Tapate, I did not protest. On the return of Sita to Ayodhya. Mm. I did not protest when Ram brought Sita back to Ayodhya after the, uh, the, the, this Banagaman, the return from the forest. Mm. So, I did not protest. And alas, alas, I did not dip my head in the Ganges and then make offering to Mahadev. Uh, but still, I have this desire in my heart to attain Krishna Prem. But it's completely futile. Uh, this is a kavya. Kavya is such a thing that the words are there. It's like the striking of a bell. You hear the words, hitting the bell. But after you hit the bell, then there's an echo of the sound of the bell. So that is called dhwani. So the meaning of poetry is not in the words. It's in the dhwani, the implication. So here, this poet is saying, Rasikul Tanks Goswami. He is saying, that if you want to get Krishna Prem, you have to, only those who have no head can attain Krishna Prem. Purva, it has a bully you have to forget everything. Like you have no head, you don't remember who you are. Only they can attain Krishna Prem. Once praying Bhakti herself from the spiritual came down to earth and was searching everywhere, asking, where is that person? Where does he live? That person who has no head. Hmm? Why? Because I only live with him, I don't live with others. If you have chinta, what will I do? Where is the money? Where will I go? Does this person like me? Does this person not like me? What are they saying? Hmm? I'm talking about others. Hmm? You are living in your head. And you are the shukshma sharia, ling sharia. Like this. Then, bhakti will never live with you. Brain will never come. The person who is shana got surrendered. Jariyati asu ya kosham, blinga banga ohe anyase, the shukshma shiri is melted by the power of bhakti, then prema only lives with that person. So knowing this, one devotee is lamenting, alas, alas, I didn't drink nectar between the sun and the moon. Perhaps you know, in Sri Bhagavatam, once demons and demigods churn the ocean of the milk, hmm? And Dan the Danuntari came with the pot of nectar. And then Mohini Murti, she was deputed with the, uh, the duty to distribute the nectar. So all the demons sat on one side and the demigods sat on the other side. Hmm? So because the demons were very lusty, when she was taking the nectar and giving to the demigods, the demons, they did not complain. Because every, they were lusty, they wanted to enjoy her. They were thinking, if I say something, She's doing something wrong, she'll be upset and then 
Perhaps she will not meet with me later. So the demons were just trying to be nice. <laughs> and she was smiling at them and looking at them. <laughs> they controlled my calm. <laughs> Very clever. So then Mohini came and was giving the nectar to the demigods who were sitting in a line. But one of the demons, Rahu, Rahu thought, oh, I'm not going to miss out on this. He disguised himself as a demigod and he sat down in between Surya Dev and Chandra Dev, the sun god and the moon god. <laughs> and when Mohini Moki was giving the nectar, and then when, when she came to Rahu, then the sun and the moon, they said, hey, this is not the Devata, it's the demon here. But it was too late, one drop of nectar came in his mouth, but he didn't go down his throat. Then Ajit, one form of Lord Narayan, Ajit came and with his chakra, he cut off the head of Rahu. So his head stayed alive because nectar was there. <laughs> his head lived. And now Rahu is very upset with the sun and the moon. So every now and then Rahu attacks them and that is called the Surya Grahan and Chandra Grahan. Solar eclipse and the lunar eclipse. So what happened to the Rahu who sat between the sun and the moon to drink the nectar? He had his head cut off. <laughs> so the poet is saying, oh, I am so unfortunate. I never had my head cut off. I still have my head. <laughs> Then he's telling, I never complained when the Banagaman Virodita Bata Kritana Sita Pate. I never mm, protested the return of Sita and Ram. Why? Because it happened that when Sita and Ram came back from Lanka after the war in Lanka, and at that time there was a washerman. So this washerman, his wife was out late at night. And she came back late, and any lady in Vedic culture, they cannot be out by themselves after the sunset. <coughs> so she came back late, and the husband locked the door. That's it, she cannot come in now. She knocked, let me in, let me in. He said, no, no, you came back after sunset. Hmm? You were away without my permission, so I cannot accept you. So then that his wife said, oh, Sita was away for so many days without the husband's permission. Huh? Staying also with another man, <laughs> Rava. But see, but Lord Ram took Sita back. So then that man said, I am not like Ram, I follow Dharma. <laughs> huh? When Lord Ram heard this, then he said, oh, the people are using uh, my life as, as an example of what is wrong. But if I am Mariada Purushottam, if I don't set the example of what is Dharma, what is Mariada, then society will be ruined. So then, Lord Ram, he sent Sita away to the Ashram of Valmiki Rishi. Huh? He never gave up his love for Sita, huh? but he had to follow the Maria. Huh? So, very pathetic story, Karunaras. Huh? But what happened? That washerman who had criticized Lord Ram in that life, in his next life he became the Dobi, the washerman of Kamsa Maharaj in Mathura. <laughs> and when Krishna and Balaram and all the coward boys came to Mathura, hmm? Krishna said, oh, hmm? can you give me this cloth? He said, no, no, this is for Kamsa Maharaj. What did Krishna do? <laughs> head off. <laughs> <laughs> Krishna with his hand, cut off his head. So this one Vaishnava is saying, alas, alas, I didn't complain when Sita came back <laughs> because I still have my head. <laughs> <laughs> Then he's saying, alas, alas, I did not dip my hair in the Ganga and to make the offering to Lord Shiva. Hmm? Who is that? Vrikasur. Vrikasur was worshipping Lord Shiva. Hmm? He was doing hard austerities, very hard austerities. And then to get the powers from Lord Shiva, he dipped his head in the Ganga and then he was going to cut off his head and offer it in a fire get to Lord Shiva. But he was just about to do it and Lord Shiva appeared. Because he's, he's Ashutosh, he's easily pleased. <laughs> Lord Shiva appeared and said, I am mm, satisfied with your austerities, what benediction do you want? So Brikasu said, give me the benediction that if I touch anyone's head, it will explode. <laughs> Lord Shiva said, Tatastu, so be it. So then, now he thought, now I have the power, I can kill anyone. 
I should test it out. He was thinking, who should I test it out on? But then no one was there, but Lord Shiva was there. <laughs> I tested on him first. <laughs> so he came to test that. Lord Shiva was running. <laughs> he went everywhere. No one could save him. <laughs> so finally he prayed to uh, our Sri Krishna. And Sri Krishna took the form of a young Brahmin boy. And he came to Vikasur who was chasing Shiva. He said, you are fool. He said, why? He said, Lord Shiva is a liar. Why do you put faith in his words? <laughs> he, he said he's giving you this benediction, but it's a lie. He hasn't given you the benediction at all. Hmm? Said, if you want to know, you can test, just put your hand on your own head and see. Nothing will happen. <laughs> so then he smiled. Huh? And any form of the Supreme Lord, he's very charming. He smiled and oh yeah, probably you're right. Let me test. <laughs> when his head exploded. <laughs> so what this Vaishnava is saying, alas, alas, I never put my head in the Ganga to offer uh, in the Ganga to offer to Mahadev. Why? And I still have a head. So how can I get back to you? I never get back to you, alas, alas. <laughs> so really, if you want to attain Krishna praying, then Complete surrender, Sharanagati. Sharanagati, complete surrender. No shelter of anyone else or anything else at all. Hmm? Just like Draupadi. You know Draupadi? In the gambling match, hmm? due to Krida, in the assembly of the Kauravas, Yudhisthira Maharaj, he started to gamble, he lost so many things, and even in the end he gambled his own wife, Draupadi, and lost her in the gambling match. This is a teaching to everyone. There are four regulative principles. Don't eat meat, fish, eggs, onion, garlic. Don't take intoxication. Alcohol, ganja, bhang, coffee, mm -hmm. green tea. All these things. Don't take any. And the, don't have any illicit connection with the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. And don't don't gamble. Don't gamble. So what did Yudhis Maharaj do? He started to gamble. But these four sinful things are the influence of Kali Maharaj. If you only touch them a little bit, hmm, then they go in like a needle and come out like a plow. You just touch these sinful activities, you think, oh, you touch just a little bit of wine. Hmm? Just a little bit of ganja. No. You touch a little bit, it will, Kali Maharaj will enter and take over your whole life. So don't touch. And you this team has shown a little bit of gambling, but what happened? He became mad and lost everything, even his wife. So now, Draupadi didn't belong to the Pandavas anymore. He belongs to Duryodhan. So Duryodhan said in front of everyone, in the court of the Kauravas, Hey, my brother Dushashan, tear off her sari, tear off her clothes and make her naked. Hmm? So then Dushashan came and he grabbed the sari of Draupadi and began to pull. Then Draupadi, she wanted help from her husband. She looked at Yudhisthira Maharaj. But Yudhisthira Maharaj looked down. He put his head down. So then Draupadi, she looked at Dronacharya, a great Acharya. She looked towards him and Dronacharya looked down. She looked to Bishwadev. Bishwadev is a Mahajan. Hmm? Bishwadev also looked down. There was no one to save her. She was holding on to the cloth with her hands. But Dushashan is extremely powerful. She could not hold. In the end, she was holding with her teeth. But she could not. It was hopeless. So she had Anya Shrai. Anya Ashrai, other shelters. But one by one by one, she was giving up all the other shelters from her life. And in the end, even her own teeth, she let go and called, Hey Govind, Rakoshana. Oh Govinda, I take shelter of you. Hmm? And then when she did that, then, you know there's Das Avatar, Keshavadrita, Meena Sharira, Keshavadrita, Kurma Rupa, Keshavadrita, Raghupati Rupa, there are ten avatars, Kurma, Matsya, Varaha, everything. But at that moment, Krishna came in, Keshavadrita, Vastra, Sarupa. <laughs> Vastra Avatar, the Sari incarnation of God. Krishna was a Sari incarnation. 
So, Supreme Lord himself appeared in the form of... And it, Dushashan was pulling the sari, pulling, pulling, and there was no end to it. He was pulling and pulling. It was piling up on the ground. It was miles and miles long. Huh? And he became exhausted. He couldn't pull anyone. And drop it. He was still dressed. Huh? So then he had to give up. So Krishna will save that person who surrenders. How? Anyashray. Without any other shelter. Hmm? Anyashray is other shelter. So Ananyashray. Ananyashray. Without any other shelter. That's Sharnat. Then Krishna will say, You may be thinking, In my life I have many problems. What can I. No. Surrender. The problems are there because one is not surrendered. Don't look at Bhishma, Drona, Yudhisthira, Maharaj, anything. Or your teeth or anything. Huh? Just surrender and depend on Krishna. Then Krishna's mercy is coming. To say. Draupadi is actually pure devotee. So she's already Ananyasra. She already has no other But she's doing this pastime to teach us. Huh? Like Nanda Maharaj also. Huh? You know that Nanda Maharaj with all bridge buses. He was uh, preparing. He was preparing to do the puja to Indra. Anyasra. <laughs> But Krishna came there and said, Oh Baba, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, you are a child, you don't answer, go and play. Hmm? You are a child, you cannot understand, you should go and play. Hmm? Krishna said, Oh Baba, Pita Sri, please tell me. I just know about taking cows to grace, but you are a learned person. How will I grow up to be like you if you don't tell me? Nanda Maharaj said, we're doing this Jagya sacrifice to Indra. Because Indra gives the rain, and from the rain comes the grass, and the cows eat the grass, and it becomes milk, and this is how we are living. So Indra is our shelter. Without his mercy, we cannot live. We are dependent on him. So then, Sri Krishna said, Oh Baba, in the middle of the oh much water and no one lives there does the rain fall in the ocean? <laughs> and the man said yes so if the rain is falling on the ocean even it doesn't need water it's made of water <laughs> and no one is doing yagya there and the rain is falling on the ocean then why do we have to do puja to Indra? Hmm? Every person in this world is doing karma and they get the fruit of their karma. So even if Indra sends the rain, he's only sending the exact amount of rain that you deserve by your karma. So what's the point of worshipping Indra? No need for this. You know that Indra, he has a thousand eyes. How did he get a thousand eyes? <laughs> so you worship, you become like that. <laughs> you become, like you worship you become like that so it, Krishna was giving many arguments and he persuaded and he said no we should not worship Indra we should worship, worship Giriraj Govinda Krishna said have you ever seen Indra Nandamaj said no I've never seen Indra yeah. Krishna said Pratyaksh Praman is best <laughs> you have to believe everything Krishna is saying is actually Apasiddhanta but out of love, he's saying, to change the mind of Nandras, Pratyaksh Praman is the best. What you see, you can believe it. <laughs> Actually, Shabda Praman is the best. But Krishna said, Pratyaksh Praman is the best. What you see, you can believe. You've never seen Indra. You know who you can see? Giriraj Govardhan. When the clouds are moving and they hit the top of Govardhan, then the rain comes. Govardhan is making the rain. <laughs> Govardhan, you can see from the body of Govardhan, hairs on the body of Govardhan is coming, that's grass. So Govardhan is feeding the cows, that's why his name is Govardhan. Go means cows, Vardhan means increasing. Who's increasing the health of the cows and the herds of the cows is Govardhan. The Brahmanas, they give blessings to us. And Gomata gives blessings to us. So forget this worship to India. We should do three Vida Karma, three types of Karma. Worship, cows, brahmanas, and govardhan. This is the best. Yoga. 
Nanda so Maharaj said, all right, we'll worship Indra, and then afterwards we'll worship the cows, the Brahmanas, and all. Krishna said, no, no, all the things that you prepared for Indra, just take that, and just use that and worship God. So Krishna was smiling so sweetly. Nanda Maharaj, though Krishna is a little boy, seven years old. But everyone, Nanda, Upananda, Abhinanda, all, they were charmed by him, and they followed what he said. So they worshipped Govardhan, and then the, the next day, not the next day, the, they worshipped Govardhan under uh, uh, Pratipada, first day of the moon, after Deepavali. Then the next day, Bratri Dutya, Brother's Day. They took bath in Jamuna, brothers and sisters, they take bath in Jamuna and give gifts. Then on the next day, the Tritya, the sky went black. It was freezing cold, wind was blowing, and then heavy rain came. And now Nanda Maharaj, an, an old bridge bus is the oh. Why did we listen to this little boy? <laughs> now Indra is angry with us, and everything is being flooded, everything is going to be ruined. <laughs> so what did Krishna do? Hmm? Kupala ki jai. Krishna lifted Giraj Govardhan on his little finger like this. I was doing that too. So what does this mean? You have you seen the deity of Shri Nathji? Madhavendra Puri. Now in the Valap Sampradaya they worship. But he's actually our Madhavendra Puri's deity. Huh? Standing like this, holding Giliraj Govardhan. The meaning is this. Krishna, being seven years old, for seven days, lifted Govardhan to take away from your life seven Anyashrayim. Mm -hmm. Seven shout shelters. You see? Because instead of taking shelter of Krishna, who do we take shelter of? Devashi Bhutaktarinam Pitrinam Nakinkaro Nayam Rinicha Rajam Sarvatmana Yasharnam Sharnam Gotomu Kundam Parirti Karta. Narad Muni has told to Vasudev Maharaj this verse. That no need to take shelter of the Devas, the demigods, the Rishis. The Bhutas are the living ent entities. Mm, after your family members, mm, mm, Renam, the people in general, the king, mm, the forefathers. Don't worship all of these things. Don't be in the shelter of these things. Why? Because they can give you something. But whatever they give to you, Krishna gave to them. Mm? Let's say that you owe him $10. Hmm? But he owes him a hundred dollars. So if you you may have to think you are indebted to him, ten dollars. But really you are indebted to him. <laughs> he can forgive you. He can say, okay, forget the debt, and then he'll say to him, you only owe me ninety dollars now. Hmm. Right? So you don't have to surrender uh, to your. Let's say you have a debt to your mother and father. Right? <coughs> but whatever your mother and father have, Krishna gave to them. You have, have a debt to the demigods. They're giving the sun, the wind, the air, everything. But whatever they're giving, Krishna gave to them. So you can, instead of being indebted to so many different people, if you just surrender to Krishna, you become free. Saravatthana ya sharnam sharnam gato mukundam kata. You have no debt to anyone. You have no responsibility to anyone. Our responsibility is only Krishna Sambandha. Relation is only with Krishna. Supreme Lord. So when the sky went back black, Krishna lifted Govardhan Hill. Then Nanda Maharaj was on the first day. First day he was thinking, oh, why did I listen to my son? Now we've made a big offense to Indra and Indra is destroying everything. It's a complete disaster. And Nanda Maharaj began to worship Indra. He was chanting mantra. The 46 names of Indra, very famous in the Vedas. O Indra, Chakra, mm, Aditi Ja, the son of Aditi, like this, and Pavanagraja, and all these names of the Indra he was chanting. The whole day he was praying to Lord Indra, and after one day, Krishna said to him, O oh, Baba, O oh, Pita Sri, why are you praying to this Indra? He's such a uh, he's such a narrow-minded person. Only one your whole life you were worshiping him. One day you didn't worship him, and he's taken some kind of vow to kill everyone in Raj. 
What kind of character is this? Is this a man in a man in Being very kind and respectful to others. This is a very hard-hearted person. How can, you cannot get mercy from a hard-hearted person. So at the end of the first day, then Nanda Maharaj, he decided, okay, I'm not, I give up worshipping Indra. Hmm? They worship. Then, the next day, day two, Nanda Maharaj was thinking, all the rishis, uh, they give us blessings. Uh, like the Rasa Rishi, Bhaguri Rishi, Shandalya Rishi. All the rishis, they're giving us blessings. I should do puja to the rishis. So then the second day, Nanda Maharaj was worshipping all day, the rishis. At the, at the end of the day, still the rain was coming. He said, oh, this is not working. So he gave up that shelter. They worship Buddha. Hmm? Then, then, Nanda Maharaj was thinking, actually in our village, it's very important, you have to get the blessings of the old people. Right? You, you have to respect the old people and the old people will give you Ashirvad. So he was thinking, oh, Krishna's grandfather, Parjanya Maharaj, that's his the paternal grandfather, and maternal grandfather, uh, Sumukha Gop. So, he was praying, he was going to all the old people in Braj and bowing down, touching their feet, please give me Ashivat, please give me Ashivat. <laughs> all the old people, they gave blessings to Nanda Maharaj. At the end of the third day, it was still raining. So, oh no, this is not working. <laughs> so he gave up there. <laughs> then, the next day, fourth day, he was thinking, four, now four days come, Krishna is still holding up the hill. How long can he hold it? So then he told all of his family members, Get your sticks and help Krishna. <laughs> so then Upananda, Abhinanda, Sunanda, Nanda, his brothers and others, they all came with their sticks and they were trying to help Krishna hold up the hill. Mm -hmm. They told Krishna, eh, you must be tired, just put, you just take your hand away, just for a moment. <laughs> and we'll hold it for you so you can rest. Krishna moved a little bit, oh, the whole mountain was coming down. <laughs> Uh, then Krishna said, no, this will not work. Then Nanda Maharaj, he gave up. <laughs> Thinking that the family members can save us. Deva, she goes after, after the family members. So then Nanda Maharaj was thinking, oh, in my life, everything I have, it's by the blessings of the Pitri, my ancestors. So then on the fifth day, <laughs> Nanda Maharaj was doing Pitri Puja. <laughs> For Westerners, you may not understand, but the Indian devotees know, right? Of Pichu Buddha. <laughs> so Nanda Maharaj, he was worshipping his ancestors. At the end of five days, still the rain was coming. So Nanda Maharaj, he was all, oh, and he gave up also. Devashi Buddha through Nanam Pitrinam. Then, on the sixth day, <laughs> Nanda Maharaj was thinking, this is a big disaster. I am such a f I am an older person. I should have known better. Why did I listen to this boy? Everyone is will be criticizing me. All the, I'm supposed to be the king and the leader, and I led them into this calamity because I listened to this boy. I'm such a fool. I'm so embarrassed. Everyone must be talking and criticizing me. And he was ashamed. This is called local ladja. Hmm? What do we do in our life? Uh, what we, ch we choose to do this, we choose to do that. You think about when you're choosing to do something in your life and you'll find that very often you make a choice. You only think, if I do this, what will other people think? <laughs> right? <laughs> it's correct, huh? Mm. Uh, uh, some young person is thinking, I, I want to study medicine, I'll be a doctor, everyone will respect me. Uh, or if I become an accountant or lawyer or something. Huh? It's because the, the prestige, uh, the honor of others, they don't want to do anything that will be, make them embarrassed. So instead of choosing to do the things, someone thinks, if I leave everything and go to Vrindavan to serve Krishna, what will everyone say? Hmm? The devotees don't mind, but the regular people. So we, one reason we don't surrender is the opinion of other people. Actually. Hmm? So then on the sixth day, he was, all day he was worried, everyone will, I'm supposed to be the leader and I made this disaster, everyone will be criticizing me. And then at the end of the seven day, six days, it was still raining. And then in Nanda Maharaj, he just, I don't want to think about this anymore. And on the last day, the seventh day, he began to think. 
No one could help me. The devas, the rishis, Bhuta, Apta, the Pitri, no one could help me. And whenever there was danger in Braja, then what happened? Always Krishna saved us. So then Nanda Maharaj just thought, Oh Kanaya! <laughs> I will not think of anyone in our life in Baraja. Always you are the one who said, and as soon as Nanda Maharaj just thought this, then all the rain clouds, Sambhartak hmm? Mehek, they all turned around, they went back to the Amaravati, the, the, the place of the, the city of Indra. Huh? And the sky which was dark became light. As soon as he th only I think of Krishna, all the clouds in the sky, they got together and they went back to Amaravati of Indra. Like this. Mm -hmm. So this pastime of Krishna Govardhan Lila, this deity of Sri Nathji, Krishna is telling everyone, Sarva Dharma Prachajama No one can save you, only I can save you. Don't be in the shelter of anyone else. Do Sharnagati to me. Be in my ashray, in my shelter. Don't be in Anyashray, in other shelters. Because that will compromise your surrender. It's, uh, that means surrender is only partial. Mm -hmm. So, you may think, if I surrender to Krishna, then what will happen? Mm -hmm. Krishna in Bhagavad Gita said, Yeya tamam prapadyante, thanks to Taiva Bhajana, I reciprocate with everyone. See, Krishna said, Ananyas chintayantomam, yejana paryapashate. If someone only thinks of me, then how can he think of how to take care of his own life? Hmm? Krishna said, no problem, I take care of his life. Whatever you have, Krishna says, I protect it. And if you need something, Krishna said, I personally bring it myself. Someone may say, but I don't want to bother Krishna with these things. This is not a botheration for Krishna. Krishna likes it. Krishna gets happiness serving his own devotees. That's why Krishna, all the pastimes of Krishna are to serve his devotees. He's controlled by the love of his devotees. Huh? You know, Udav. Udav is very close devotee of Sri Krishna. Very great devotee. And before Krishna left this world, Krishna gave him the most beautiful instructions. So later, then Krishna told him, I want you to go to Badrakasha and, and give this instruction to the sages there who are under the shelter of Narana and Rishi in Badrakasha. But on the way, on the way, Uddhav, you will, when you come to the Jamuna, bank of Jamuna, there you will meet with Vidura. Also. It was the last instruction of Krishna, to Uddhav. Yeah? Krishna said, Nudavom vapiman you know, yad guna nadita prabhu, hmm? ato vad mad vayunam lokam grahan i atishtatu. Krishna said, Uddhav is not even slightly less than myself. Hmm? Uddhavom vapiman you know. Uddhav is not even slightly less than... How can you say that Uddhav is not less than Krishna? Hmm? Why? Because... Atomadvayunam lokam grahayani atishtatu I am leaving, Krishna said, but you have to stay here to speak Bhagavatam. Hmm? So when a person speaks Bhagavatam, hmm? then actually Krishna has entered into them and he is speaking. Hmm? Bhagavatam is Krishna's the Van Mai Murti, the sound incarnation of Krishna. So even though it seems Krishna became Aprakat, he is left. But Krishna is still there in the form of Bhagavatam, Bhagavat Kata. And who is the speaker? Uddhav is the speaker of Bhagavat Kata. Very, very powerful. Hmm? So, when Uddhav, he came to the bank of Jamuna, there he met with Vidura. And Vidura, though Krishna had left this world, Vidura had been on Parikrama at that time and he didn't have any news. He didn't know that the Yadu Banks had disappeared. Right? And Vidura asked Uddhav, Oh, how is Krishna? How is Vasudev? Devaki? Akrura? 
And all the Yadu Bangsi. How? When Udav heard this, ah, he was burning in separation. Because Krishna had just left. He wanted to go with him, but Krishna, no, you have to stay here and speak back. So now Udav was burning in separation. And in his separation, he lost consciousness of the outer world completely and went in Samadhi. And in his Samadhi, he went to to Krishna hmm? in the Aprakat Dham hmm? and he was there for one Muhurta one Muhurta hmm? then after some time Udav tears were streaming from his eyes and he wiped his eyes Shanaka Bhagavan Lokan Nilokan Puna Agata Vimrija netta viduran prithu dhava utsmayan. The meaning is slowly, slowly, Udav returned from the transcendental world. Chanaka Bhagavan Loka. Nriloka Mpuna Agata, back to the world of the human beings. His body was here, but in, in Bira, Vipralamba Bhav. In his samadhi, in his trance, his separation, he went to be with Krishna and now Viduri is trying to speak to him. Hmm? And slowly, slowly, Shanaka Bhagavalokan Nilokam Puna Agata, he came back into this world. Then Mim Vimri Janetri Viduran, wiping the tears from his eyes. Pritya Uddhav Utsmayan, he was smiling. And with great affection, he began to speak to Vidura and answer his question. Uh, why was Udav smiling? Why was he smiling? He says, because when he was with Krishna in Aprakat Dham, in the spiritual world, then Krishna said to him, Hey Udav, Vidura is asking a question to you, go and answer his question. <laughs> <laughs> so because Krishna in his samadhi told him, so he came slowly out from the samadhi and smiling, oh, Krishna loves you so much, he wants me to tell you something. You see? Huh? So what is that? That's Guru Tattva. Understand? That's Guru Tattva. Guru Dev is the Golok Basi, Golok Prindavan Basi. Nitya Parika, eternal associate of Radha Krishna. Every day Gurudev is chanting Harinam and serving in Goloka Prindavan. Huh? But very kindly, he stops his Nam Bhajan hmm? and he's talking to us. Hmm? Because Krishna has told him to do Pracha. <laughs> hmm? So this is Guru Tattva. <laughs> very. Why is it? Huh? How Krishna's mercy comes to us through Gurudev? Yeah. <coughs> so then Udavji was giving instructions to Vidura. So, he told Vidura, actually you should hear from Maitreya Rishi, he is older than me. Because Udav, he knows the Mariada and he doesn't want to do Mariada Vyatkrama, overstep the Mariada. So he's thinking, though Udav is very pure, but my is senior to him. So he told Vidura, you hear the instruction from my yeah? This is why, you see Maharaj, both, both Maharajas, they are more senior to me. Hmm? I never say anything, any word or sing any kirtan. I ask them, you sing kirtan, you speak, oh, if you give me a blessing, I can say a few words. Oh, otherwise, Mariyada Bhattikrama. Overstepping the boundaries of etiquette. Mariada hmm? Vaishnava Bhushana. Following the etiquettes of Vaishnavism <coughs> is the ornament. Vaishnavas don't have gold earrings and necklaces, all these things. The ornament of the Vaishnava is how they respect their Guru Jana and their seniors hmm? and they follow etiquette properly. This is Udav showed me. Huh? Udav. He has said a very beautiful verse about Sharanagati. Mm -hmm. He said, Kim Chitram Achuta Tavaitad Ashesha Bandhu 
Dasheswananya Sharneshu Yadatma Satvam Yarochayat Samirga Swayamishwaranam Sri Matkiri Tatapidi Tapada Pita Very beautiful. What of Ji is saying? The the great demigods wear crowns full of jewels. But what are these crowns for? These crowns are for polishing Krishna's footstool. <laughs> See, Krishna sits on his throne in Dwarka. And his feet are on there, another little asana there for his feet. Hmm? So the servants come and polish. Huh? But the demigods are lucky. One day Lord Brahma came to Dwarka, you know. Huh? He came and the doorman said, who are you? He said, it's me, Brahma. He said, wait. <laughs> he came back here. Which Brahma? <laughs> Brahma said, what thing? Which Brahma? <laughs> I'm Brahma in the whole universe. I'm unique. Chaturmukha Brahma. Four-faced Brahma. <laughs> the doorman said, yeah, just wait here. Oh. In the waiting room. Mm -hmm. yeah? So, Brahma came in the waiting room. So many devatas, were, demigods were all there waiting to have an audience of Krishna. <laughs> Finally, after a long time, then Brahmaji had his chance and he came into the palace of Krishna. And Krishna said, oh, is everything well in your universe? Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah? not one universe, millions of <laughs> Everything well in your universe? And Krishna smiled. And when Krishna smiled, because he knew the doubt, Brahma was saying, I'm one Lord Brahma. Only one, unique. <laughs> Indispensable. <laughs> When Krishna smiled, then Brahma looked and saw millions of Brahmas coming like a swarm of bees. He has four heads. He saw Brahma with eight heads, sixteen heads, thirty-two heads, sixty-four heads, hundred and twenty-eight heads, a thousand heads, ten thousand heads, ten million heads. Huge Brahmas coming. And they're all bowing down. And when the jewels on their crowns touched the footstool of Krishna, it made a tremendous noise. And Brahma, he felt like just like a rabbit standing in the middle of a herd of elephants. You know, a rabbit is very scared. If a rabbit is in the middle of a herd of elephants, then he feels very insignificant. So seeing all the other Brahmas, then Brahma, he felt very insignificant. And he became Trinada peacefully. He said, very humble. By the mercy of Krishna. So... Uddhavji was remembering this, he said, <coughs> that Krishna is so great, his opulence is so great, that the crowns of the, the Lokapals, the, the demigods who protect all the universes, the jewels on their crowns, are not for decorating them, they are for, only for polishing the asana where he keeps his feet. Like but still, that Krishna, Dasvesha Nanya Sharneshu Yadatma Sattva, he himself surrenders to the devotee who surrenders to him. <laughs> now this is a very beautiful point. Atmasat. Have you heard of this word Atmasat? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kobiheno kripa labia eja. Krita ta hoi veinata Shakti budi hi amiyati di Koromore atma sata Atma sata Here Srila Bhakti Nautaka is saying Gurudev Please you make me atma sata So atma sata means that I belong to you It has four meanings First I belong to you Second meaning I have no independence from you. Third meaning, my heart and your heart are one. And last meaning, that may, uh, may you pervade all my senses. That means that everywhere you look, in all your senses, only hear, see Krishna everywhere. Huh? So this is Atmasat. That you have completely given yourself, that you have no independence. 
mm, that your senses are pervaded by Krishna and your heart and Krishna's heart are one. This is called. So Bhakti Notakur is saying this, oh Gurudev, make me like that with you. Atmasa. Krishna Das Karaj also he has said mm, that. Eighteen Takur Gaudiyaki Kari Achin Atmasat. Eighteen Achanavando Tinimoranat. That, yeah, the, the, who is a Gaudiya Vaishnava? Yeah. A Gaudiya Vaishnava, who is a person who is Atmasat to mm, Tin Takur, yeah. Govinda Gopinath and Madan Mohan. Yeah. That is a Gaudiya Vaishnava. Yeah. Who is Atmasat yeah. to Govinda Gopinath and Madan Mohan. So here, yeah, understand the deep meaning. So he Udavji is saying that Dasweshananya Sharneshu Yad Atmasatta. That when a devotee is fully surrendered to Krishna, then Krishna becomes Atmasat to that devotee. Eh? I'm not saying devotees Atmasat to Krishna. Udavji is saying that Krishna becomes Atmasat to that devotee. It's incredible. That means Krishna thinks. Hmm? Oh my Vaishnav Thakur, I belong to you. Hmm? Krishna thinks, Oh Vaishnav Thakur, I have no independence. Anubara Jami Amnit Man Pujayatyangi Renubi. Krishna himself has said it. Nira Peksha Munim Shantam Navaryam Anubara Jami Nittam the meaning is, Krishna says, my devotee never depends on anyone else. He's always absorbed in mind in thinking of me. He has no enemies in the world at all. And I am always running behind him to take his foot dust to purify myself. Our Guru Vagra are like this. Our Guru Varga, Krishna is running behind. You, when you see our Guru Varga walking, you should know Krishna is running behind, trying to get food dust. To purify himself. To purify himself of what? He can't repay the debt to his pure devotee. Now, Pariyam Niravaja Samyajam. Our Acharyas are all the gopis. Krishna said, Now, Pariyam I cannot repay you. So, Krishna, to purify himself from his debt, he is running after the pure Vaishnava, taking their food dust. This is the power of surrender. Krishna becomes fully Atmasat, surrendered to that devotee. Jiva Goswami has explained. Pure Vaishnava is Swatantra, independent. Vaishnava is independent. But Krishna is not independent. Krishna is dependent on the Vaishnava. <laughs> Everyone is thinking Ishwara Parma, Krishna Satidananda Vigra, Krishna is supreme controller. Hmm? But actually, Krishna is controlled by the pure devotees. Hmm? You can see in Bhakti Sandarbha. Yadrichaya Kena Pi Parama Swatantra Bhagavat Bhakta. Sangha Tat Kripa Jat Mangalu Dayena. How do we become fortunate in our life? Nothing that you can do and nothing that Krishna does. Parama Swatantra Bhagavad Bhakta Sangha. By the supremely independent Bhagavad Bhaktas who are wandering by their free will, Yadritchaya, wandering throughout the world and giving mercy to everyone. Hmm? Lord Brahma has said it also. After Lord Brahma tried to steal the friends of Krishna and it was a disaster. Hmm? And Krishna showed many, many forms. His all expansions became the cows, the calves and the boys. And Brahmaji was seeing the vast ocean of Krishna's opulence. It was so bright, it was so effulgent. Brahma could not even look at it and he closed his eyes. It was so overpowering, he could not even think. Only thing came in his mind, Kim Idam. Kim Idam means, what is that? And then Brahma fainted. Brahma was unconscious, overpowered by the great Aishwarya of Sri Krishna. Then when Brahma slowly came back into external consciousness, he rubbed his eyes. <laughs> He's got four faces. He rubbed, Brahma rubbed his eyes and then he opened his eyes. 
And instead of seeing all the opulences, what did he see? Little boy. With uh, the yogurt in his hand and rice and fruit. Wandering here saying, Subal, Madumanga, where are you? Looking for his friends. <laughs> and Brahmaji got down from his swan and gave Dandavat Pranam. Hair standing on end, weeping. Again and again, trembling. And slowly he composed himself. And then Brahmaji began to offer prayer. No midya tei braba pasai tadi dambaraya gunjava tang sapari pichala sanmukaya when that strajai kavala vetra me vishana venum lakshma sriyam rigupatei pasupanga jaya. O Krishna, you are the only object of worship for all living beings. Your complexion is like a fresh rain cloud. You are shining with like golden lightning dhoti, decorated with peacock feathers and earrings made of... Hmm? You are not decorated in gold and jewels. Your ornaments are made from berries, gunja, from the forest. How sweet. Huh? You don't have the, the chakra and the, the club. Hmm? What do you have? A stick, bamboo stick for the herding the cows and the flute. And you're standing before, before me with very small, soft lotus feet, Pashupan Vijaya, as the son of a Pashupa, of a Gop, Nanda Maharaj. Huh? So don't think Krishna is the son of Vasudeva and Devaki. Because Lord Brahma is the Guru, Pashupan Vijaya, son of Nanda and Yashoda. Hmm? Understand? So then Brahmaji, then he said, Asya pi deva vapuso madanu grahasya Icha mayasya nahi bhuta mayasya kopi Neshe mahi tvabasitam manasantarena Sakshadda vaiva u kim ut uh, uh, atma sukhanu bhute Very beautiful. Brahmaji is saying that O oh my Lord this body that I see before me as a beautiful cowherd boy. Mm -hmm. You see, when Brahmaji had said to Krishna, you are decorated with peacock feather and everything, then Krishna didn't talk to him, but telepathically, he spoke in the heart of Brahma. Tene Brahma Aridya Adi. In the heart of Brahma he spoke. He said, oh Brahma, you are very beautifully described my Swarup. Uh, you know everything about my Swarup. Brahmaji said, uh, now he's embarrassed. Brahmaji is saying, Asyapi Deva Vaposo Madanu Grahaya. Even though this form in which you are giving mercy to me, actually I cannot understand it. I don't understand it. The power which is in your coward boy Swarup, your Gopa Swarup, Manasantarena, even when I'm in a Samadhi, Manasantarena, I cannot understand it. Mm -hmm. What to speak of understand your, your Swarup, the power of your Swarup. I cannot understand the joy that you feel inside yourself. And what to answer Atma Sukhanu Bhute. But your Atma is who? Bridge buses. The bridge buses are your life and soul. So I cannot imagine the happiness that you feel in your loving pastimes with the Prajapasis. It's completely beyond me. Hmm? In fact, their love is so great that Swecha Mayasya, Nahibhuta Mayasya Kopi, your body is not made of Pancha Mahabhut. Hmm? It is Satchidananda, <coughs> but Swecha Mayasya. Here, the word Swecha Maya, it's in the Bhagavad Sandarva, it's described there. That here Swecha Mai means everything that Krishna's body does is Swa Icha according to the Icha of Swa, his pure devotees. Hmm? Krishna, many incarnations are coming to this world, one after another. Why? Because there's some devotee here praying. Hmm? Advaita Charya was worshipping Shalakashi Mahaprabhu came. Hmm? So, Supreme Lord, everything he's doing, he surrendered to his Premi Bhaktas. According to the degree of their praying. So Sri Krishna has said, Bhakta ama preme bandiyachi, ridhya bitari, yaha netra padita dekai amai. 
Wherever my pure devotees look, they see me. And I am fully under their control because they have bound my heart with the rope of love. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if we want to approach Krishna, if we want to please Krishna, then, as Prabhu was singing when I arrived, singing so beautifully, Krishna Setoma Krishna Gite Paro Toma Shakati Aji Amito Kandala Krishna Krishna Boli Daitava Pashe Paji O Vaishnav Thakur, Krishna is yours. He belongs to you. Hmm? You have the power to give him to me. So I am Vaishnav Thakur, I am just running behind you. I am crying, Krishna Krishna. Hmm? So if we can serve our Guru Dev and pure Vaishnavas, then they pray for us. Yasya Prasada Bhagavat Prasada Yasya Prasada Nagati Gutopi. Hmm? When they pray for us, hmm? When they tell, Oh Krishna, please appear in the heart of my Shishya. Then Krishna, yes, what can, how can I serve him? <laughs> and at once he's carrying out the instruction of the pure devotees because they bound him with the rope of praying. Sila Guru Dev Ki Jai Sri Rupanuga Gauriya Guru Vada Ki Jai Gaur Premanande Hari Hari So if you have any question, you can ask Maharaj. Oh, <coughs> so I'm not, not sure if I will be able with my English uh, express what I will ask. The, uh, Maharaj, you often uh, speak about the pain, pain of separation of Krishna and what you do, what, what now do with, with it, uh, but uh, uh, I think it's here some, some, something worse, yeah? some Acharyas um, speak that my problem is not separation from Krishna, but my problem is that I don't feel separation from Krishna, I feel some something empty in my, but uh, I, I know nothing about, I, I, I don't feel anything to Krishna, yeah? So it's some, some, something under, or uh, some level under, and uh, problem, higher problem, yeah? Mm -hmm. So can, can you tell something about, uh, about this level, uh, missing of, of Krishna, or when someone don't feel mm, the separation, yeah? Only feel something empty inside. Mm -hmm. is, is it understandable? Maharaj is asking you to say something. <laughs> First of all, if, if our Acharyas pray, Oh, I am not feeling separation. <laughs> this is their humility. Actually, it's their humility. Because it is said, Spremera Swabhava Jaha Premara Sambandha Say Bhakta Krishna Mori Nahi Prema Ganda That devotee, he thinks, that who has brain, he thinks, I have no brain. Hmm? What to speak of the devotee, even Radharani, says that she has no brain. Na prema gandosti durap me haro, krandami so bhagya baram prakasita, bhangsi vilasana na lokanam bina, vivami tat prana patanga kambrita. Chaitanya Mahapu also said this verse. Hmm? Radharani is saying, she was crying in separation. And Saki said, why are you crying? You have so much love for Krishna. Radharani said, no, I don't have any love at all for Krishna. Not even one smell, even the scent of love for Krishna, I don't know. Then why are you crying? I am just for show. Krandami Sobhagya Bharam Prakashita, only to make a show. Hmm? But the proof that I have no love is this, that a fish loves water. If you take the fish out of water, then it's on the bank in anxiety and he quickly dies. 
But me, Krishna has gone to Mathura, but I'm still alive. This proves I have no love. <laughs> uh -huh. You see? So, just because Acharya says, I have no love, I have no separation, it does not mean that they have no... They're actually on the very highest level, and they speak like this, because that's the mm, praying swabhav, the nature of praying. Uh, but for the conditioned souls, we in this world, like myself, very fallen person with many anarthas, so I am not feeling any separation. Uh, so this is the... This is a problem. This is. So, for such persons, we have to try to do sharanagati. Because the feeling of separation is not a material emotion. It is a, the vilas of swarup shakti. It is the play of Krishna's spiritual energy of bhakti. So, we have to... That's why I was speaking on the subject today, sharanagati. Don't be in any other shelter. <coughs> Take shelter of Gurudev and serve. By serving slowly, slowly, our anarthas, anartha nivriti, the anarthas start to go away and steadiness comes in bhakti. And then as we are engaging steadily, slowly, slowly, then bhakti devi, just like Supreme Lord descends into this world, so bhakti devi in the form of our prakrita pran descends into our mind and senses. Avir bhuya, avir bhuya mano brito, brajanti tat swarupatam. Swayam Prakasha Rupa Api Basamana Prakashava. Sri Rupa Goswami describes how Bhakti is a Aprakrita Pran, supernatural Pran, and appears in the mind and takes over the mind. Hmm? Takes over the Jitta. Shuddha Satma Visheshatma Prema Suryam Sangi Bhak Ruchi Vischitta Masranya Kridaso Bhava Uchate. The Bhava appears in your Jitta and melts the Jitta. <coughs> this is Bhava Bhakti. And then you feel separation. That separation, in the stage of bhav. Before that, we can, we don't really feel separation. It may be that sometimes, when you have Vaishnav Sangha, hmm, I want to tell one kata very nice of Prabhupada Bhaktivedanta Bhakti Dait Madhav Maharaj. Huh? Someone asked him, how do you feel separation? Hmm? So he said, if you read Bhagavatam, you read a book, hmm? and there is a description of separation of gopis, you read, but you don't feel anything. Hmm? So you go, and you go to Gurudev, and you hear Bhagavatam from your Gurudev. Huh? Why? Because in the heart of Gurudev is the fire of separation. And when you go close to a fire, you feel the heat. Huh? You know, if you read in a book, you are cold, so you get a book about fire. And you read it, but you're still cold. <laughs> <laughs> so same way, you read about gopis, but you don't... But if you sit at the feet of your Guru Vargas, and the fire of separation is in there, then when they are speaking, then some heat of separation may come to you. And then, by their mercy, we can experience something. So it depends on the adhikar of the person. That means it depends on their stage of development. In the beginning, first surrender. Follow the path of bhakti, go through anatta nivriti, and then when nishta and ruchi comes, then when we're in the presence of our guru varg, then their bhav is sankramit, reflected onto us. When our chitta has become, chaito dhapana our chitta has become like a spatakamani. Spatakamani means a crystal. So when nishta and ruchi comes, heart is clear like a crystal, and the rag of our Guru Dev starts to reflect there, and it inspires us. Then it becomes Raga Nuga Bhakti. So now it's late. Uh, we, we can, if there are other questions, we can discuss afterwards. But because it's late, we cannot do loud kirtan after nine o'clock. So we should have RT now, so we can finish before nine or around there and not disturb the neighbors. Can take more questions later. Already, almost. It's too short. Param Puja Pad Sri Bhakti Vichara Vishnu Maharaj. Param Puja Pad Sri Kanta Das Pramachari Prabhu Ki. Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Pram Praki. Lord Premanand. Hari Hari Bo. Sri Kanta Das Pramachari Prabhu Ki.